Good morning from sunny Los Angeles, California, everybody. This is Matt Wiggins of Matt Wiggins Entertainment and Designs with, boom, Sadie, vicious guard dog standing by just in case, and presenting Norma Jean, my new 2014 Porsche Boxster 981. Today I wanted to show you something a little uh, extra special, at least I find it extra special. Couldn't find a whole lot of information on the internets about this particular modification. And that is how to create your very own customized badass gaping hole covering apparatuses, a.k.a. your radiator grill mesh for a whopping six bucks, ladies and gentlemen. Eat your heart out. Without further ado, let's get rocking. In order to complete this beautiful modification, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to need a few tools, a few apparatuses, a few supplies, and I am here to show you exactly what you need coming up right now. First thing you need to do is run right out and grab yourself a beautiful Porsche 981 Boxster like Norma Jean. Drive her on over to the Home Depot. You can get away with one of these beautiful metal lock in gutter guards. At the same time, pick up some four inch standard cable ties oh yeah need some tools wire snips needle nose pliers definitely help you out a sharpie you may or may not choose to use it but i did and i'll show you how then we've got ourselves a hanger uh-huh yep i use this to create the form the shape of the radiator intake a cutting apparatus like this beautiful stanley 99e model then you need some cardboard to create a template for your radiator intake. Cleaning supplies to clean out the critters and nests and nastiness out of your radiator intake. And we've got ourselves Starbucks. Oh, hell yeah. Gotta have it. And of course, a guard dog. You'll also need some black model paint just in case you need to touch anything up. Last but not least, a crochet hook. <laughs> Things are about to get crazy. Before I get started on the full tutorial, I need to step back in time and show you how to take these guys on and off. Uh, the strakes, uh, safely, I know some guys may have some apprehension about it. It's really not too difficult, just take your time. But the most important thing is to release this center tab. You can see this right here on these center supports. Um, this one I have pre-released uh, since I'm making this video with one hand. So you're going to take that and you just essentially pull it down, release that, Come to the outside. Don't go at a 90 degree angle and try to think you're going to have to pull this way or this way. You actually just apply a little bit of force and pull it straight towards you. It's going to take a little bit of pressure, but not a whole hell of a lot. So you just pull that out and you come over here. You'll do the same on this side and it will release like this. When you put it back on, you're going to start from the outside edge. So you're going to feed this through. Okay. And then you're going to line up. There's these little, uh, these little lips on the bottom side that thread onto the bottom of this. So you start here, thread that lip in the center, inside edge, and then you're gonna pop this in, and you're gonna pop this side in, okay? Then, most importantly, you wanna make sure that you get underneath here and check to make sure that this uh, tab is secure once again, because that's really what's gonna hold it in place. Pretty simple. Step one, you want to remove your strakes, which I just showed you how to do. And you can do both sides at the same time, or you can do each side individually. Ah, one of the many benefits of living in a free country. Next, take some cleaning supplies and clean out those radiator orifices of various elements from around the globe, like rats' nests, insects. Oh, I don't know, maybe a few boulders here and there. Next, you want to grab your gutter guard, and you'll notice that they have this lip at the top. You're going to want to take the time to flatten that out, or you won't have enough room top to bottom for your template. Flattens out pretty easily, and then really the only thing you have to worry about is shaping the left and right side once you have your template made. Another nice thing about these pieces, too, versus some other type of mesh is it already has the Plasti Dip coating over it. It's one of the reasons I chose this. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that mess. And, uh, and the size is actually damn near perfect once you get the left and right side shaped up. 
Okay guys, so the next step in this process was to make a template. Uh, obviously this template is not to uh, NASA <laughs> uh, perfection, but uh, the way that I came up with this uh, was using uh, this. And uh, if you have some uh, soldering wire, something that's a little bit more pliable, but thick enough that it'll hold its shape, you can definitely use that. I did not have that, so we improvised Adapt and Overcome. And here is a hanger. So just take your hanger or wire and carefully bend it into the shape of your radiator opening. And it works very well when you reapply it to the cardboard to create your template. Easy peasy. Your mesh piece is enough to make one set of grills. So find the center line and cut it down the middle. The next step is we cut out our template and place that over the mesh. Let's do that now. Once you have your template, essentially just take your opposing color Sharpie, trace around the margins, take your wire cutters, easily snip around that outline. You don't need to mess with the top or bottom, which is another nice benefit about this piece. And once you have it cut out, they're essentially the size and shape of your radiator openings. And then it's time for the moment of truth. The install. Oh, hell yeah. One of the slightly more challenging aspects of this install is figuring out how to get the mesh on the inside or the outside opening. I chose to go from the inside, and essentially I just put my hand in the opposing side, started shaping and molding the wire. It's fairly simple, um, and working it through. You want to take your time doing this so you don't scratch everything to hell. But uh, I found it to be pretty simple. It went in very well, and the next part was essentially just starting to shape it. Once it's inside, have your hand towards the back and take your other hand, start shaping and molding the mesh to the radiator opening, and uh, you'll find that the top and bottom ratio is almost right on the money and creates kind of an opposing back pressure, which holds the piece in place while you get ready to install your zip ties. Once you have the generalized position, you can grab your needle nose pliers and refine that and pull the mesh taut. I did find it more helpful, honestly, to use the crochet hook. It doesn't chip the paint as much as the needle nose pliers. I had to retouch some areas with some black model paint um, afterwards. So the crochet hook can help prevent that, and it's also very useful to help with your zip ties, which I'm going to show you right now. I wanted to show you quickly, this is the mesh in place without any zip ties. You can tell the top and bottom edge hold it in place fairly well while you get ready to secure it, which is up next. All right, once you're ready to secure, grab your four inch zip ties and strategically guys and ladies, you'll have to figure out where you want to put yours. I'll show you where I put mine, but once you find the spot, feed it through, grab your crochet hook, feed that through the grate, grab the tail end of the zip tie, pull it on through, and then essentially you're just gonna zip it on down nice and tight. And you'll see that uh, larger end there. Basically you just take that and you can pull it towards the back of the strake frame and it will hide that very well. And then uh, grab some scissors or your uh, cutting apparatus and you can cut that tail off, hides it really well. Once that strake's on, nobody's gonna know it's there. All right, I wanted to share my zip tie strategy with you real quick. These are the contact points that I used on both sides, work best for my mesh shape. Every case is gonna be a little bit unique with some ingenuity and patience and trial and error. I guarantee you'll be successful. One issue I did run into is the inside's a little thicker, so you may have to string two zip ties together, no big deal, just cut off the excess that you don't need. But overall, these zip ties will hold that mesh in place real well. It looks great. One thing you do wanna make sure you do is push the larger piece towards the back as best as you can towards that mesh. The nice thing about the way the strakes are designed is they don't, they have the top lip but not the bottom lip, so it doesn't hinder them from going on. And the end results, well, here you go. With one of the strakes on, I wanted to show you how clean these lines are. You don't have zip ties hanging out or over here or here. Just a super clean look, um, really updates the look of the car and it's functional, which is nice. Uh, and the end results really do speak for themselves. I mean, look how beautiful this is. It's subtle, but it's also very significant. And if you're not a guy that's trapped into the idea you got to spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a kit for your car, this is the best six dollars that you can spend. It really does look stunning, and I'd say good luck in your own project, but I believe in making your own luck. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for new videos, and hey, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.